Can I discard uh, 50, 56 runs during that match? I've heard a lot about them, seen them in the newspapers, everything. Stay off range when you don't want to punch. Long time ago, I saw Kennedy in the newspaper keeping, yeah. Ouch, what a wonderful catch! Maurice Omondi Odumbe was born in June 1969 in Nairobi. Odumbe attended Dr. Agri Primary School and Upper Hill Secondary School, where the right-handed batsman and right arm off break bowler showed aptitude for cricket. One thing that people are not aware of, uh, my late brother, Kenneth Odiambo Odumbe, was the first indigenous uh, black to actually uh, to have played for Kenya. Yes, and uh, I think from there, that's how we picked it up. And uh, we also, I have also other four brothers who have played uh, cricket for Kenya. Uh, for example, in 1990, there were four Odumbes in the team uh, that traveled to Holland and uh, UK. And uh, also when we started cricket in the, in the streets of Park Road, uh, we used to use um, maize cobs and uh, a plank of wood will shape it in the shape of a cricket bat and a dustbin as the wicket. Uh, and that, that's how we picked it up. Odumbe made his debut for Kenya on June 1990 against Bangladesh at Amstenville at ICC Trophy, scoring 41 and taking one wicket out of 26 runs, becoming one of their leading players by Kenya's one-day international debut at the 1996 Cricket World Cup. Odumbe won the Man of the Match award in one of cricket's biggest shocks, taking three wickets for 14 runs in Kenya's win over West Indies. Odumbe made his first class debut in 1998 when Kenya played the touring England A side, making 16 and taking 29 runs, and continued to play well for his local Nairobi side, the Aga Khan Club. If I remember correctly, in 1984, when Kenya was still playing these qualifying matches, qualifying that means playing the likes of Ireland, Holland, you know, those are not test playing countries. <clears throat> I was in the reserves and uh, I did not make it, but my brother uh, Tito, Edward Tito Odumbe, made it to the national team. And uh, ever since, I think I've represented my country uh, from the age of 17. And um, in fact, even in that tournament, I think I was the second highest run scorer in the tournament. Uh, and then from there is when we qualified for the 1996 World Cup, uh, which was held in India, Sri Lanka and, and Pakistan. And uh, in 1996 is where we caused one of the biggest sporting upsets. And I'm not only talking about cricket, I'm talking about football or an underdog. It, I, I'll give you an example. It's like Harambe Stars beating Brazil. And for us in 1996, when we beat the mighty West Indies, uh, was like Harambe Stars beating um, Brazil. <laughs> There's a little wide, and that could be out. It is, it's out. It's bat and pad. And Modi taking the catch. Adumbe doing the damage again. Adams leaning forward and bat and pad, and he's out. He was appointed national captain prior to the 1996 Cricket World Cup, winning a Man of the Match award against Sri Lanka for his 82 runs of 95 deliveries. That could be out, it is. He goes for the tickle down the leg side and he gets a faint air. And then 2000, and, and in between I was playing uh, club cricket as a professional. I played for Soweto in South Africa. Uh, then I played in England for a, uh, in a, for a club called Addiscom and that's in Surrey. Uh, the 1999 World Cup and uh, that's where I met the Queen for the very first time. Uh, we were taken to Buckingham Palace and we met the Queen uh, and then 2000 and, and then the year 2000 uh, we had a major tournament here it was called like the mini World Cup
He passed over for captaincy for Steve Ticolo for the 2003 Cricket World Cup. Odumbe played well as Kenya made the semi-finals and in the following year he hit a career-best first-class score of 207 against the Leeward Island. Maurice Odumbe won everything as a cricketer at the club level, the international scene, including even meeting the Queen of England. But a simple scandal would cut his success short. In March 2004, Odumbe was investigated by the International Cricket Council following allegation of possible match fixing and was found guilty in August 2004 of receiving money from bookmakers and was banned from cricket for five years. Commentators at the time believed that the suspension would end his career. Um, I did not do what I would have wanted to do uh, for Kenya and that would have been to play test cricket and to make Kenya play test cricket. Fine, there are incidences that happen, for example, like in 2004 when I was suspended from the game for five years uh, for inappropriate contact, uh, inappropriate meaning that um, I was friends with somebody who is a bookmaker and I, I got five years for that. Um, and some of my girlfriends were their witnesses. Uh, not a single Kenyan actually testified most of these women were flown in. Uh, the judge was flown in from Zimbabwe, Judge Ibrahim, who I personally feel should have disqualified himself because 2002, when we were playing a triangular uh, series, that was Kenya, uh, India, and South Africa, um, I got suspended for criticizing the umpire. And uh, Judge Ibrahim was the match referee and he felt that I brought the game into disrepute by criticizing the umpire openly when there were channels that I should have used you know, to, to air my grief, grievances and I did not do that. Uh, but I personally feel in a way Kenya has let me down because when, 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 when ICC came here, International Cricket Conference came here and suspended me, nobody stood by me, the government never stood by me and considering uh, what I've done for this country in terms of cricket. He has played 61 ODI matches, scoring 1,409 runs at a rate of 26.09 matches and taking 39 wickets at a rate of 46.33 matches and 17 first-class matches, scoring 894 runs at a rate of 34.34 matches and taking 40 wickets at a rate of 19.55 matches. Since his suspension, he is planning to release a song and has announced his intention to stand as a candidate for the National Democratic Development Union in the forthcoming general election. And that's still on the cards because I, I honestly feel that the, uh, some of the leaders that we elect, you know, uh, there's a lot uh, that, that is left that, that you know, needs, needs to, to, to change. And I'll give you a classic example. You know, we, we, we do not need people like Sonko as an example. To be honest with you, people like Waititu, you know, where, where are we headed? You know, we need people who will effect meaningful changes. You know, we, we, we don't want people who are just there, oh, I am a Moshimiwa, no. We want meaningful changes, and, and this is what I am for, and this is what I'd like to do. You know, let's have people like Paul Tegart, you know, people who mean well for the sports. The veteran cricketer has only one regret. If you ask me, somebody like me, I've done more than what even somebody like Waititu will ever do for this country. But yet, when Waititu walks by here, I will all be, you know, kneeling down and, you know, shouting accolades, oh, Moshimiwa, Moshimiwa. And yet, somebody like Boris Odombe, who has given his all, Right? Nobody wants to know him. You know, in fact, if they had a chance, they'll lynch me. And I think that is wrong. Manuia Kevin for the score.